there is power in prayer prayer is one of the apostolic models that were left with the church in acts chapter 2 from verse 42 the bible tells us the major spiritual activities that happened within the early church acts 2 42 it says they continued steadfastly take note of these two words continued and steadfastly the word steadfastly means diligently favorable or otherwise they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and breaking of bread and in prayers so prayer was a major part of the activities that turned ordinary believers to apostles right from genesis to revelation we see accounts of saints praying patriarchs praying unbelievers praying are we together the bible is full of prayer prayer in its various ramifications in various dimensions the prophets of baal they prayed to baal asking him for help elijah prayed abraham prayed moses prayed when jesus walked upon the earth jesus prayed the bible would tell us every once and again that he departed in mark chapter 1 from verse 36 37 38 that he departed to a solitary place and there he prayed verse that should be um verse 34 35 go back 34 from 34 down the bible says and in the morning rising up a great while before day he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed not that he slept he prayed are we together he taught the disciples to pray because they themselves requested that he should teach them to pray. They came to him according to Luke's synoptic account. They said, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples to pray. And Jesus began to teach them on prayer. It was Jesus himself who said a lot of things about prayer. So he spoke about prayer. It was a major training model as he was building the disciples to become apostles. He asked them to tarry with him when he went to Gethsemane. That they tarried with him for just an hour. They didn't even have the capacity to pray. The Bible tells us Jesus prayed, repeating the same words three times. And sweat came like drops of blood. He prayed. He prayed for people while he prayed for himself. Peter, Satan has desired to sift you like wheat. He says, but I have prayed for you. It was Jesus that gave several stories and several parables relating to prayer. One is in Luke 18 where we read earlier on and Jesus spoke about two men who went to pray. One who went arrogantly talking about his givings and the works of the flesh and the other one went, he bowed himself and he was crying for mercy. Are we together now? So prayer is a subject that every religion in fact to be quite honest i do not know any religion any practice whatsoever provided there is spirituality connected to that religious practice there is some form of prayer some form of activity that seeks to connect men to the divine whether demonically or you know our connection with jesus christ as we know so prayer is an essential part of every believer's life i want you to listen very carefully Jesus took time to pray. We see that Jesus won not just because he was the son of God. He won not just because of the presence of the Holy Ghost. He won not just because he had the word. But the Bible is very clear as to the fact that prayer played a vital role in his victory. A vital role in his victory. When the disciples came, in fact, it was at the place of prayer that the Holy Ghost came upon them. Are we together? He says to tarry ye in Jerusalem until you be endued with power. The Bible says they gathered together in one accord, Acts chapter 2. And then the Holy Ghost came and began his dispensation through the saints. Prayer was an essential part of the early church. Acts chapter 6 and verse 4. When they beckoned on the apostles to come and deal with the matters of welfare. They said, set among yourself people full of the Holy Ghost and wisdom that we will serve to attend over this business. And he says, as for us, verse 4, we will give ourselves continually to prayer. Continually to prayer. Continually to prayer. They didn't say we'll give ourselves to prayer. The key is continually, the consistency to prayer. 
All through scripture, we are admonished to pray. Mark eleven twenty four. Verily, verily, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when ye pray, it is in the place of prayer that you can believe that you receive and then you eventually have it. Are we together? First Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17. The Bible speaking through the apostle to the church in Thessalonica, he says to pray without season. Say that after me. Pray without season. One more time. Pray without season. Are we together? Yes. He says, for I know that this shall turn to my salvation or for my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of Christ Jesus. Apostle James further encouraged us to pray. James chapter 5 and verse 13. He says, is any man afflicted? He says, let him pray. Let that man who is afflicted pray pray let that man who is afflicted pray let him not just think let him not just assume let him pray it means that prayer is a vital component please listen very carefully you have to listen to this to understand what i'm teaching you tonight prayer is not an option for believers it is poor mentorship that has made prayer look like an elective course if I would use that expression for believers where you have to choose so you hear people say things like I'm not really the prayer type but I go to church but the prayer is, is not really we, we are not really the prayer type are we together let me tell you the truth prayerlessness has been responsible for the bankruptcy of efficiency in the life of many believers Prayerlessness has taunted many moves of God, personally and territorially. There are many things that God desired. Those, 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 those desires of God were even captured by the prophetic, but they never happened because prayer was the missing ingredient between prophecy and its manifestation, whether for your life, your family, your city, territories, Many, many things God said have refused to come to pass because people have not learned the role of prayer in birthing the program of God, in birthing the purposes of God, and in evolving until they become powerful people. There are many ways to detect prayerlessness. One of it is to look for where powerlessness is. You see that now. When you find powerlessness, there usually is the diagnosis of prayerlessness or inconsistent prayer. There are wonders that are embedded in this mystery that Jesus left with the church, the mystery of prayer. A few people have left it to men of God the apostolic and prophetic and intercessory community. So we have those who have prayer groups, prayer houses, prayer ministries, and usually we fold our hands and wish them well. And every time we are plagued with trouble, the next thing we scan through our phones, who really prays? And you say, ah, there's this brother. That man, he can pray. And you say, please, sir, I'm in trouble. Send. And then sometimes we add a small seed to it. And then we expect that everything will be done. And it is unfortunate how many of us have not tapped into the riches. There are men of God today who may never be able to birth God's prophetic program for their lives. Not because God has not desired so, but they have not understood the role that prayer has to play in destiny actualization. Who is learning tonight? For some of you, you came to church to be taught that the real reason why your situation has not changed is because you have not prayed you have always desired to pray you have hoped that you have that you will pray occasionally when the situation pinches you you just take one day of fire brigade emergency approach but you have not given your destiny consistent prayer are we together now a woman can be pregnant with all due respect two months pregnancy is not the same as an assurance of having a baby are we together now? You heard what our dear sister, you know, the sad testimony, but we thank God for the end of it. Consistency. If a woman carries a baby for three months and she says, I'm really tired, unfortunately, she's going to lose that baby. She was pregnant. There was a real baby there, but she could not stay through. 
there i sense in my heart that there are many of you god is telling you that if you remain the way you are and you remain prayerless you will literally one day watch your bishopric being given to another because god is a patient god but he cannot allow the destiny of another person to be punished because of your refusal to become there is a time allotted for your destiny to happen so that it profits god's program did you hear what i said there is a time allotted for your destiny to happen so that it profits god's program and once you are out of that calendar God loves you, but he cannot wait indefinitely again because your refusing to emerge will now begin to cause pain and setback for another person's destiny. God is going to have to trust someone who has the diligence, the zeal, and is willing to pay the price in righteousness to become. I've taught you here that there are many people today carrying their own assignments and other prophetic assignments that was not part of their initial script because God found them so faithful. They had enlarged their capacity. He felt safe to add certain mandates to them. So it is possible a man can start with God and that what that man is currently doing was never part of the original script. But those that were supposed to execute that part of the assignment as an act of their will, they did not engage in the many spiritual activities that produce power, stature, wisdom, and grace. And they continue to delay God's program. And you will have to make do with an alternative. I'm praying for you. May God never raise an alternative because of your prayerlessness. May God never have to give someone else your assignment because you have indefinitely delayed his program. May God not have to raise help for your family from outside because all those who had the mandate to clear the powers of darkness and bring liberty to the family, they, they, they are at a loss as to what their prophetic role is. You will fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus Christ. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Behind every man of stature in the spirit you see in the body of Christ, and this is not just limited to preachers, even though mostly preachers. Behind every man and every woman of God, genuinely anointed, genuinely graced, that you see God trusting them today with mandates over nations and territories, is a rich and healthy, consistent, many years old prayer life. Did you hear what I said? Many years old prayer life. I submit to you and biology teaches us a 10 year old child and a 2 year old child are all alive. They are all children but they are not the same. A 13 year old child is called a teenager. A one year old child is called a baby. There is a difference. The difference is in capacity. When that 13 year old child becomes 18 years consistently growing, you have an 18 year old child, you have a 13 year old child, you have a one year old child. They are all children in some way. But you see the difference is that one can be trusted with greater responsibilities. One will have to be carried indefinitely. One is still forming their beliefs and their understanding. One is assumed now to be an adult. How about a 50 year old man? How about an 80 year old man who has lived effectively? When consistency is in place, time becomes an advantage. The value of time is that it can help to sponsor consistency. If you tell me you have been saved for 10 years, uh, 10 years does not make any meaning to me until I see the investment you made in that time. If you tell me you have been praying consistently, genuinely, for 10 years, then I step up my bar of expectation. If it is genuine prayer, I should see what it has produced in your life. You cannot tell me you have been praying for 10 years consistently. Either there is something wrong with the way you pray, how you were taught to pray. If you have prayed for that long and I cannot see the power component, the wisdom component, the fellowship component, the results that follow that life, I will have to teach you how to pray in a way that works. Are we together now? Holy, holy, blessed is he who comes 
in the name of our God. I don't know any ministry, any mighty ministry that did not start as a prayer ministry. Every ministry, it doesn't matter what you will later become, it starts as a prayer ministry. It doesn't matter what God is going to use you to do in the future. Are we together? The starting point, if you really want to do business with God, is prayer. In fact, it is better to be poor in Bible study and to be rich in prayer. There is something the Holy Ghost will do in you that will return you back to the place of the world. You can sit and open scripture in an empty way and not learn anything. But show me a people that can pray sincerely, the Holy Spirit being in their midst. Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of God. Follow the spiritual history of many powerful believers in the kingdom. You will find a storyline like this. One day, a burden was put upon my spirit. The hand of God came upon me. And by myself, I felt to separate myself somewhere and to start praying every day. If you don't hear that storyline, something is wrong. There must be, it doesn't matter how the story started, there must be a point where the Holy Spirit will place something on you. It's literally as if he hijacks you and takes you somewhere and you begin to become a slave to spiritual things not a slave in a negative way you have submitted yourself to it so every night two hours under one tree now you don't know what is happening to you tomorrow you go there again next week you go there again i'll be teaching you what happens to your spirit man when you start let me tell you the truth a day will come you will go as usual and something will come upon your life you will never recover from again it's true the church has not understood prayer properly. Now, there are people who pray, but what corrupts the potency of their prayer is their motif and their understanding. So in as much as they engage in spiritual activities, the profit point, the, by their ignorance, they have downplayed what prayer should deliver. But when prayer is done well, when prayer is done properly, Hallelujah. Listen, the way believers grow is very defined. You are not given liberty to choose how you grow. The parameters for the believer's growth is defined. And the tools that make for that wholesome growth are also defined. Are we together? When you tell me I want to grow spiritually, you won't say, well, I think I should choose what to do. No, there is what to do already. They are not many. What you need is not just to know them, but to engage them consistently. And one of it, ladies and gentlemen, is to explore the wonders of consistent prayer. Let me tell you something I have learned about prayer. The first assignment of prayer is not to deliver results. You will be disappointed many times if what leads you to consistent prayer is a problem you want to solve. Mm -mm. God can answer a prayer request somewhere in church, but when you submit yourself to prayer, the first thing that happens is not results. The first thing that happens is death. Are we together now? That prayer begins to do something within you, and God found something in men that he uses. The moment God sees that the delay in answer is keeping you prayerful he will prolong it intentionally that is the only way he can trap you i know you won't believe what i'm saying but it is true listen look at me look at me let me teach you this <laughs> let me teach you something about god you see ba god does not reason like men are we together now everything in the economy of god is with respect to his will and his program and if God sees that there is a situation in your life, he's not hurting you. Anything that can help you become is a tool he can use. 
So there are many of you here, your convenience led to your prayerlessness. And when God found you in a situation that trapped you, that trap was producing hunger, that there was nothing else that could come, the lack of the rent, the lack of the situation, you never would have woken up to pray by yourself. You never would have been able to fast by yourself. But when you had one medical report that was not exactly the best, now it's not God that is causing that. And if it is God, at the end of it is glory. But there are times that God prolongs a little because he has found profit. That's what it means to call light out of darkness. Hallelujah. <laughs> Do you know how God lures men in the kingdom? He gives you a taste of what can become your reality. Then he hides it back. If you don't know this about God, you have a very long journey to go. Listen to me. I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. Are we together now? Yeah. As a man of God, one day you will go for a meeting, you know, that you just went there sincerely hoping and God will do mighty things in that meeting and you will go back and you honestly cannot tell what law you engaged to have seen that kind of power. God withdraws it. He walked it through your hands and he withdrew it so that your hunger will drive you back to the secret to say, Lord, I have tasted of this. Don't deprive me of this joy again. And it will, it will cause you to stay until it becomes your experience. Are we together so there are many times it looks like God is not interested in answering prayers no he has found something within that condition that profits his program in your life are we together now yeah it's true this is what it means for death to walk in a man when you submit yourself to prayer if God cannot draw you to the place of prayer willingly and because of the kind of destiny you have, if he discerns the sincerity in your heart that is not rebellion, listen, once it is not rebellion stopping you, God himself will use any opportunity available to draw you to the place of prayer. Where God will leave you in peace is when he's aware that yours is not laziness, it's not weakness. It's an act of your will. You have chosen to reject efficiency. He will respect you. But once he finds hunger there, are we together now? So the day you hear that you've lost your job and you have five children to feed and there is absolutely nothing, God did not cause the loss of the job. But when you come to him and say, Lord, I will not leave you till you tell me where I'll feed my children. He says, finally, there is, an, there is a burning bush. Something has drawn you there. If it is the God of the Bible, I assure you, it's not the next day of that prayer you will get the answer. You will stay there. There is an advantage he has found. There is something you never would have had him say. You will not even believe it. There is a level of pride. There is a level of arrogance he needed to deal with. So many of the things that you think are evil are working good in you because they drew you to the place of prayer and God will not be in a hurry to answer them until the spirit of prayer and supplication rests upon you. He now knows that even if he's answered, you can't stop praying again. Then he can bring the answer. Who is learning tonight? You think you will go to pray for a three days fast all to get power that runs the remaining part of your life. God is not that stupid. Let me tell you the truth. Three days prayer and fasting cannot kill flesh and lust. You are joking. It will take many years of slow dealings by the spirit. Are we together now? God knows you are a politician until you repent. So when you get there, Father, I love you. You see all these souls you have given me. God says, they are my souls. So stay. Lord, I'm fasting because of this conference. The next level of my ministry depends on it. And God will keep quiet like he's not hearing you. 
while you pray and pray the truth is that you were fasting that three days fasting because you have seen that destiny helpers will be gathered there and he will see the sincerity of your heart but God is looking beyond that program he wants to make a sign and a wonder he may honor you for that program but he will lead you he will still leave that hunger in you until you get to a point where it's no longer about you no longer about a program no longer about an anointing you give yourself continually a level of death begins to walk there ladies and gentlemen i will run with you through a list that i prepared tonight what happens when men begin to give themselves consistently if you are not consistent in prayer you will not see any of these things i'm mentioning even though you are praying there are people who have been praying but they will not find anything among this list that I'm about to mention because there's no consistency. Africa prays so many believers pray but we have not derived the profit and the power that comes from prayer because we have not been consistent. I'm praying for you that the spirit of prayer and supplication tonight honestly will mantle someone that the grace to pray and stay till it works wonders in your life may it rest upon you in jesus name when we pray there are six things that happen when we pray consistently consistently number one the first thing that happens to a believer when you submit yourself to consistent prayer is that our spirits are quickened to discern our spirits are quickened to discern the quickening of the spirit that leads to discernment is the first gift you receive when you are consistent the quickening of the spirit that causes you to discern philippians chapter 4 6 and 7 let's hurry up the Bible says be careful the word careful there is talking about anxiety be anxious for nothing listen but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God what happens next verse 7 it says and the peace of God which surpasses all understanding are you saying that something has happened to you beyond the realm of understanding that peace will guard your heart and your minds do you know what it means it is a it is a dimension of discernment where the peace of god guards both your heart and your mind it's like a system of regulation it tells you something it's a language in the spirit when the peace of god can guard your heart and guard your mind most people do not even know what this is about because they have not submitted themselves to prayer. Consistent prayer. Listen to me. Everyone, listen to me. You don't have to be an intercessor. You just need to be a serious person with God and your destiny. At the point you make up your mind in righteousness that I will submit myself to consistent prayer consistent prayer consistent prayer praying in the spirit praying in tongues consistently you access the quickening of the spirit what does that mean I have taught you many times in this house that the, the way we have senses Papa Hagen would teach it so beautifully that you have your sense of smell your sense of sight your hearing, your skin for touching and feeling. Are we together? Your tongue for tasting. We say there are five senses biologically, you know. In the realm of the spirit, there are more than five senses. Now, with all due respect, fathers like Papa Hagen would teach that there are also five senses in the realm of the spirit. I agree, but there are many other impulses, and I taught this many years ago, that there are many other impulses that a man has within his spirit that does not have physical definitions. Are we together now there are various channels for perceiving things that do not have their physical parallels you cannot give it language and yet you know that you have perceived things in the spirit are we learning now there is the hearing and hearing in the spirit too there is seeing 
and seeing in the spirit too. There is feeling and feeling in the spirit too. But there are other channels for perception that are not defined. Biology does not give us definition. But they are, it's, it's like your body is connected to a lot of other higher mechanisms for perception. Let me tell you, if you pray consistently, you will be able to discern immediately. And, and, and I'm not talking of flesh and biases. You can know when God is in a thing and you can know when God is not in a thing. Your spirit has been quickened. You can shake somebody and not know why you are feeling the way you are feeling. The person is not bad. There is nothing evil because the physical realm only tastes and feels things that are current. Your spirit man can perceive tomorrow today. So you can see someone who is very nice today, but your spirit man is fighting 2026. He's fighting trouble that is coming from that relationship today. You can't, there is, there is nothing exactly that should tell you why there is trouble. I mean, this business partner is a very nice person, but your spirit has already gone and it can perceive impulses beyond the current level. Let me tell you this. That is what it means for the peace of God to protect your heart and your mind. When you submit yourself to prayer and there is turbulence within your spirit, even when there is peace physically, keep praying. Keep praying. Are we together now? Spiritual realities are not like physical realities. And if you do not know how to discern, you will, there are people today with all due respect who have passed on, who should have no business dying. They did not train this faculty. Are we together? They entered a car, everything around them, the Holy Ghost was trying to use everything to tell them but they could not perceive nor did they have the spiritual intelligence to take authority over the situation the quickening of the spirit the quickening of the spirit you can see someone have you met someone before and you just connected as if you've known yourself for five years it's because your spirits were prepared already it is only physically you don't know yourself but in the realm of the spirit there is something about destiny and when you saw it deep called on to deep that's how destiny connections happen let me tell you the truth if you want to wait till you know people physically you are carnal you will pay the price there's a way you can see someone and know, I, I don't know what it is about this person one day after five years you will meet in France and say I saw you somewhere yes truly so you are the one who should help me Judas never said, Jesus, I will kill you one day. Jesus saw Judas. Can you imagine walking with someone every day, knowing that this is the person who will kill me tomorrow? He said, that which you do, do quickly. And he went and did it quickly. You see how foolish he was? They've already told you, oh, that which you would do, do quickly. And the, the disciples thought that Jesus was talking about money issues. I cannot tell you how many people have been saved because their capacity to discern had been quickened. There are people who have missed out on the prophetic program of God. God was going left and they went right. And they stood there wondering, God, where are you? God says, I'm on the other side of your discernment. You need to pray in this end time. There is a way that seemed right unto a man. But the end thereof are the ways of death. The first thing that happens to you when you give yourself to prayer is you no more interpret life by what you hear, by what you see. Look up. Many people are defeated today because their principal channel for perceiving and interpreting life are their eyes, their ears, their brain. If my eye says it is good, my ear says it is good, I feel it is good, I will do it. That is a, that's a suicide mission. There are many good things that will land you in trouble. You need to develop other perceptions. Are we together? And it does not always have to be negative. Sometimes someone can come to your company and somebody will tell you, this guy is a thief. This guy is a nasty person. He's always causing trouble. But your spirit man receives him in a way you cannot explain. 
because your spirit has seen that there was a prophetic word mama gave on that boy and say even though you are stubborn because you helped me may god always use you that is the blessing god wants your company to receive so you can see the boy will come he's stubborn he's not listening but if you can discern and ask god why did you bring this child to this house as a house help one day god will tell you you see ba many things that god gives men does not come in packages that are beautiful it takes discernment are we together now yes it takes discernment somebody who may not necessarily be that loyal and faithful but one day the person will be a contributor to you at a point of desperation desperation I know people today who kept supposedly nobodies in their houses when they became sick when they became down do you know that some of those young ladies young guys were the people who stood with them if I made up their mind that even if madame would die even if Oga would die I would stand even when their own children ran away there was a little girl called the slave girl her mother gave her a name we don't know what her name is but she went to the house of Naaman you think that she went to that house on her own as part of the spoils of war no there was a relationship she had with the prophet and God kept her there because he saw the purity of Naaman's heart now it was up to Naaman to listen to the girl it takes discernment some of the answers to your prayer are in packages that you will never receive if you are working with your eyes you're working with your ears who is learning tonight you must trust God for grace to discern because for some of you the reason why you always fall easily is that enemies have found out that your weakness is laughter anybody that laughs with you even if it's a, a knife is on his forehead you say you are welcome to my house discernment mm. discernment not every kind of kiss is a sign of love huh there is a kiss that is a sign of love, but there is a kiss that is a signal. This is the person to die in this family. This is a person to go down in this family. I pray for you. Where you have entered trouble on your own because your spirit has not discerned from today, may God sharpen your discernment. May God sharpen your discernment.